I have for you today a heavily edited excerpt from our DevRel Weekly meeting this morning. Austin was showing us this Phil LLM bot that he made to replace Philip Carter, whom we miss, but we can still go to Philip's stream channel and chat with someone who sounds kind of like him. Austin is proud of the bot because it rickrolled him this morning. And then he showed us the traces that the bot creates in Honeycomb as it's working. The trace has an error in it. So what are you going to do? All right. So now I'm going to go into Claude. So we know that there's an error, right? Like we saw it in Honeycomb. So now let's make sure Honeycomb is connected. Great. So now I'm going to ask Claude wow, that to is so cool. look at Honeycomb using yeah. our MCP server. It's going to go through and do a bunch of shit. Like it usually takes it like one or like it, it takes it a shot or two to it's narrow so in on go. stuff. Um, so like in this case, like go. if I just tell it, if I prompt it to, hey, um, please look at this parent, then, you know, some of this is just prompting, right? Like if you prompt it better, it'll do it'll do stuff better. So then I'm going to tell it, hey, please look at the code. And now it's going to be able to use the context that it has from Honeycomb to look at the code in order to find these specific lines, in order to fix the bug. But then, yeah, then it's going to go through and it's going to do its little to-dos. And then... Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, that's a great example. Great observability there, Austin. Beautiful trace. Oh, and the great thing is, I didn't write that trace. Most of this was um, I asked Claude Code to do the oh, hotel nice. instrumentation, and yeah. most I had to I had to guide it. Like it, again, it sure. wasn't. It's not just like oh, you ask it to do it and it does it perfectly. It's like no, you have to actually fucking work with it, and you actually have to like mm. engage. Yes. And now I want to tell it, hey, use your Git, use the fact that you know about GitHub and the GitHub CLI to like. Look at the fact that it's running the CI and the CD. <laughs> and the thing is, like, and then while I'm doing this, I could go off and do something else, right? Like, so now I'm going to oh, ask you're testing file, Slack. And I'm, I'm testing Slack again. I'm saying you've been updated. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to go back and tell Claude Code, hey, look in Honeycomb, see if we fixed it. Hmm. Syntax error at offset 37 near memory type. I, do, is there a build ID or something? So it did indeed get an error again. Did it yeah, get it's the same, same error. error. Oh, old task revision that's still running. Oh, how does it how does it oh. see the revision? Hold on, I'm gonna ask it. Huh, no, it's right. It's task revision seven. How do we get it to so I like stop? that it actually figured out it's looking at the wrong thing. Meanwhile, I go bother Phil LLM again, and then we go to Honeycomb to look at that trace. No errors. Yay. So it did work. So it did fix it. It just took time to bring yeah, down the recall memories, list. ping, FT list, client, set info, it's module list, Redis search. So it was not wrong, but it was a little overeager and uh, oh. thinking it was right. Version but of it the... figured out that it was that that was on yes. the old revision. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Because that's so just the reason it can do that. The reason they can figure that stuff out is because we have one thing we do off. We do have it for the MCP is we have a raw. We have a include samples option that it can trigger, and include samples gives it raw rows back, so it gives it the full span. Oh, and so that's why it is able to like infer things like that. That's cool. Neat. I love this because it shows how important it is to bring observability into the IDE right next to the code. Because there's this connection between production and the errors that happen there and the code that needs fixed and whether it's been fixed yet. And the Honeycomb MCP is so cool because it just does that with the IDE embedded agent that you already have. 